Welcome to my film review of Pain and Glory. So I've been to an unlimited Cineworld advanced preview screening for Cineworld members. Uh, it's the, what, the 12th today, 12th of August, and the film comes out on the 23rd of August. So it was a nice 10, 10 day advanced screening. Um, so it comes out in a week and a bit. And this is the Spanish film, Penelope Cruz, um, Andreas Majiga, the Spanish dude. Uh, obviously it's got Spanish subtitles. It is a Spanish movie with English subtitles, sorry. And I can confess, um, this is not the usual movie that I would enjoy, and I did enjoy it. So straight away I'm going to get out there. Really enjoyed this movie. Um, just to put it into perspective, it was on for an hour and 53 minutes. And when the movie ended, I thought, whoa, what? That's a bit of a abrupt. Why is it ending already? Looked at my watch. Yes, it was 10 o'clock. It, it was time to finish. So essentially the movie flew by. But it's a, it's a quandrum, if that's the right word. It's, it's, it's very strange that I enjoyed this movie. I'll try and help you understand whether this is the kind of movie for you or not, ultimately. Um, because if you'd have told me what this movie was about, I would have said, that sounds boring. If you'd have told me, I would have had to sit there and read the whole way through. I'm not a reader, I'm a movie watcher. Um, if I consume a book these days, I do an audio book. Don't do reading at all. Um, so if you told me I had to sit and read for an entire movie, you know, for nearly two hours, again, I'd be thinking, no thank you. But, do you know, I, I did, I really enjoyed it. So I think the key thing is, going into this movie, you need to decide, is are you, are you in the mood for this kind of a movie? A movie where you need to sit and pay attention and read the whole of the time, read the subtitles. I'm not the fastest of readers, but managed it fine. This could possibly be the first subtitled movie I've ever watched in my life. And I did, I really enjoyed it. I'd, I'd give this a seven and a half out of ten. But um, now let me try and help you understand whether this is the kind of movie for you. Because I think that's the key thing. It's okay for me, I can go and watch as many films as I want for the same fixed fee each month. So essentially, going and seeing this movie for me was free. Didn't cost me anything. But, you know, for anybody paying the hard-earned bucks or somebody that wants to know whether this is a waste of time for them or not, let me help you. So firstly, I love... Spanish. I love Spain. Um, I've been trying to learn Spanish pretty much my whole life, very casually, not going to classes or anything, but a bit of Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, stuff like that. So first off, I was thinking, great, watch a Spanish movie where, you know, consuming a load of Spanish language whilst following the plot might actually do my learning some Spanish a bit of good. So that was a strong incentive for me to go. Um, in fact, that was one of the main reasons, on top of the fact that it was a 10-day early advanced screening, so I could do a review for you guys and let you know in advance whether this is worth going to see or not. That was another reason, but the fact that it was in Spanish and I'm interested in learning Spanish was a key reason for me going. I didn't really know what the plot was about. I even listened to Andreas... Um, speaking on the on the film review podcast in an interview and from even from the interview I don't think I really understood what the movie was about I was maybe half listening and that's fine and it's actually difficult for me to even explain what the movie's about but a few key hooks that I'm going to throw at you to help you understand whether this is for you or not um, the movie I didn't realize until the opening screen where it says it's a 15 certificate and the reason for it was drug misuse that was all it said no bad language or anything i just drug misuse i didn't know there was a drug element in the movie um so if you're interested it's particularly the dark side of drugs not not party happy drugs but heroin so if you're interested in movies that have hard hitting content regarding drug use you know maybe you know somebody or you just find it a really sad subject matter then there's that is involved in the movie and it's quite powerful and uplifting at times and moving at times so that was good didn't know that was in there but I enjoyed that element um, you know hard hitting subject matter um, and they don't muck around with it it's in your face stuff so that was satisfying you know uh, powerful content and then the other element was a lot of like, is, is the word redemption, not redemption, but like um, con, 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 consulting with old issues. So 
you know, you have an argument with somebody, you fall out, and you recompense. Is, is that the right word? Like I say, the reason why I don't like reading is because I'm rubbish at words in English, so can't quite find the words, but, you know, there's a word for it that means kind of like making up with your past sort of thing. Putting the past to bed and finding peace with your past. So there's that kind of story element to this movie. You know, there's, that's part of the message, that's part of what's going on. But aside from that, there's not really much I can tell you other than it's it's about um, a Spanish guy. It kind of very briefly follows a Spanish guy's life. You've got him as a kid, and then you've got him as an adult. And, you know, bizarrely, you could argue that this is the most boring subject matter on the planet and a snooze fest. And the fact that you've then got to read Spanish subtitles should make it even more boring. But I really did enjoy this. Um, Andreas... The guy, you know, um, sorry, forget his name, but you know who I mean. The main guy, he is fantastic in this. So unbelievably charismatic, the character. You're drawn in, you, you feel his, you feel what he's feeling. You know, you're very much compassionate with, with what he's going through in his life. And um, that, I think, is the key thing. The fact that he is just so absolutely brilliant. Let's see whether I can get his name right. Uh, Antonio Bandreas. Bandreas. Sorry, my pronunciation is pants, but you know what I mean. He was the voice for Puss in Boots on Shrek. That's how I most knew him. So, like I say, he is absolutely brilliant in this. He really is. And that's kind of what draws you in. He sucks you into his world. You feel empathy with him. You feel compassion for what he's going through. And it's a two-hour movie that completely flies by. So I don't really know uh, what else I can say other than if you're in the mood to watch a movie that's relaxing, you know, it's not Fast and Furious, it's the polar opposite of Fast and Furious. You know, it's, it's a pleasant story about a guy's life, battle with his demons, mental health, that's, sorry, that's another key issue that's covered. So again, if you've got like any kind of uh, compassion for mental health, then that's covered in this uh, movie as well. So it covers a few topics that I found particularly interesting. And um, for that reason, you know, the film really sucked me in. I'd be interested to know what other reviewers thought. I wouldn't be surprised if some people said it was pants. Um, it's definitely not the kind of movie I would go for usually. I'm not going to be in a particular rush to watch it again. I might never watch it again, quite honestly. But... I thoroughly enjoyed it and I went into this movie thinking okay here we go got to be focused got to got to read for two hours you know and I was happy with that I was looking forward to that I, I wasn't going in there expecting Fast and the Furious or Spider-Man all action all enjoyment of the visuals this was very much a, a, a movie for the brain and uh, the cinema house wasn't particularly full there was probably less than 20 people in there you know, so not particularly popular from my neck of the woods. Maybe there's not too many Spanish people here. Or, but I don't think you don't need to speak Spanish to, to enjoy this movie. You know, I think it's the kind of movie that anyone can enjoy as long as you're in the right frame of mind. But I've told you what the key kind of subject matter is, so you can decide whether that's the kind of thing you'd be interested in. Um, the, the description in the, in the movie listing doesn't really tell you a great deal about it either. Um, so yeah, if you're in the mood for something a little bit different, something very slow paced, but something strangely compelling, addictive and enjoyable, it takes you on a little bit of an emotional journey. It's not exactly a tearjerker, but there's, there's one part where, you know, you really do feel um, the emotion and a little bit sad. So it's a good package of a movie. Like I say, I'm giving this a, a very solid seven out and a half out of 10. In fairness, it's not one that you absolutely need to go to the cinema to see because there's no cinematic, you know, amazingness about it, which is a good job because you spend most of your time reading and you can't always necessarily, you know, look at what's happening on the screen, but there isn't really much that you're missing. So it's not one that you actually have to see at the cinema for that reason, but I think seeing it at the cinema is a good place to see it because you've got the 100% focus, you can you know, concentrate on reading what's there to be read, and I think it does work very well at the cinema. 
Um, it's not widescreen cast, it's more of your IMAX style sizing. So, you know, think you can go to any screen to watch it. Sit reasonably close so that you can read the writing on the screen comfortably. And yeah, I'd say give this one a try at the cinema. Um, it's one that I think would appeal to a lot of people, even though it's a very unique, strange, unusual movie that I would not normally go to see. But at the same time, if you don't fancy it, by all means, go and see Spider-Man again, go and watch Lion King again, and catch this one when it comes out at home. Then you can pause it if you miss any of the languages, you can pause it and rewind it, which wouldn't be a bad thing. So you don't have to rush out to the cinema to see this one, but I am giving it a big thumbs up, 7.5 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I don't know what more I can say about it than that, other than let me know what you think if you saw it, did you enjoy it, and it comes out on the 23rd of August. So, um, yeah, quite a while yet, a week or so yet before it comes out. But there's your heads up. Definitely one to consider if you're fancying something a little bit different at the cinema, something a little bit of a change of pace from the Fast and the Furious, etc. I enjoyed it. Give it a try, but you can definitely just as much enjoy watching this one at home. So thanks for listening, and we will see you on the next review. Goodbye.